protection here in Orlando, for the most part, we have a lot of charity amongst the brothers and sisters here. We have a rapport for being hospitable to our brothers and sisters when it comes to doing God's will. But we have a lot of new faces here. I know you might have never known what it means to be charitable to one another. All right? But well, we're going to break it down to you. Scripture about scripture. All right? We'll start out with Romans chapter 12 and verse 10. Start the New Testament. The book of the book of Romans, chapter 12 and verse 10. Uh -huh. Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love and honor, preferring one another. Read it again. Be kindly affectioned one to another. It says, be kindly affectioned one to another. What that means is, when it means to be kind, you have to care about one another. Care about the needs of each other. Not just your own needs, but about your brother's needs. You know? With brotherly love. Uh -huh. In honor, preferring one another. It says, with brotherly love and honor, preferring one another. So that goes into putting your brother or your sister before yourself in, in most cases. All right? What it mean, when it says love in the scriptures, that talk about a hug and a kiss. Is that what love is according to the Bible? I'm asking you brothers. No? Somebody raise their hand and tell me. Brother Messiah, your hand went up first. You got a mic out there? Exalt the voice. What is love according to the Bible? First John 5 and 3. First John 5 and 3. Let's get that right first. The book of First John, chapter 5 and verse 3. Uh -huh. For this is the love of God, Read. that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. So love according to God, according to the Bible, is the keeping of yeah. the commandments. So if you wouldn't want anything done wrong to you, why would you then do something wrong to your brother or your sister? Now it says brotherly love in the scriptures, but this Bible was written in a masculine form. It's for your sisters as well. So if it's love to keep the commandments, if you wouldn't want somebody to steal from you, if you wouldn't want somebody to take your wife or take your husband, if you wouldn't want somebody to hurt you physically, why would you do it to one of your brothers and sisters? Because it's a commandment that we're not supposed to do that to one another, right? But right. from there, go to First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 9. The book of First Thessalonians, chapter 4 and verse 9. Uh -huh. But as touching brotherly love. But as touching brotherly love. So on the topic of brotherly love, read. Ye need not that I write unto you. He said, ye need not that I write unto you. What does that mean? What brother can answer that for me? Raise your hand. Brother Malik. Why would he say, ye need not that I write unto you? You got a microphone out there? You got to exalt his voice. What it means by he has to, um, I'm sorry, um, what it means by he doesn't have to write by it, it means that they should already know to treat their brothers. There you go, there you go. He said, this is basically saying that's common sense. You should know that you're supposed to treat your brother, treat your sisters a certain way. He said, I shouldn't have to write this unto you. Read on. For ye yourselves are taught of God. Are taught of who? Are taught of God. Read. To love one another. And what is that love again? Keeping the God's commandments. It's not hard to understand that I'm supposed to treat my brother a certain way. Why? Because he was made in God's image. He was made in Christ's image. So the way I treat my brother is really the way that I would treat God or Christ. So if I would lie to my brother, cheat on my brother, why would not I do that to Christ and God? Because that's who they look like. Brothers understand. Sisters understand. From there, go to Hebrews 13 verse 1. 
And in the Bible, you read so much plain speech. Easy to understand. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 1. The book of Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 1. Uh -huh. Let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful. That's it. Verse 1 again. Let brotherly love continue. Now, did it say let brotherly love cease? It said let brotherly love continue, not discontinue. When you continue something, that never stops. It doesn't cease. It doesn't stutter. Let brotherly love continue, meaning always you're supposed to have love for your brethren by keeping God's commandments. Everybody understand that? From there, go to 1 John chapter 2 and verse 10. So if we let brotherly love continue, and the keeping of the commandments is that love, that means you're supposed to always be doing what? Keeping God's laws. 1 John chapter 2 verse 10. The book of 1 John, chapter 2 and verse 10. Uh -huh. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light. What is that light according to the scripture? Brother Azariah. Here in front. Uh, Pro Proverbs 6.23. Proverbs 6.23. Let's get that. The book of Proverbs, chapter 6 and verse 23. Uh -huh. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light. What is light? And the law is light. So back in 1 John chapter 2, verse 10, that commandment is a lamp. So he that loveth his brother abideth in the light, meaning he abides in God's commandments. It's not hard to understand. Precept upon precept, when you keep in God's commandments, you understand what this Bible is talking about. If you abide in the light, you abide in God's commandments. Read. And there is none occasion of stumbling in him. And there is no faltering. Like we read back in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 1. He ain't going to fall. He ain't going to slip up when it comes to loving his brother. He ain't going to slip up when it comes to loving his sisters. Everybody understand that? From there, jump to chapter 3. 3, verse 10. The book of 1 John, chapter 3 and verse 10. So it said back in 1 John, chapter 2, verse 10, that he that loveth his brother abide in the light, right? Read chapter 3, verse 10. Verse 10. Mm -hmm. In this the children of God are manifest, mm -hmm. and the children of the devil, whosoever doeth not righteousness, is not of God. Neither he that loveth not his brother. So if you do not love your brother, you are not a child of God. That's what the Bible is saying. If you ain't got enough sense to care about your brother, to care about his well-being, if you sisters ain't got enough to care about your sister's well-being, you are not a child of God. You are a child of the devil. And we're going to get more into it. Jump down to verse 14. Verse 14, uh -huh. we know that we have passed from death unto life. By keeping God's commandments in our, all, in our repentant lives that we are into now. Read. Because we love the brethren. Because we love the brethren. So you can repent, you can put off your, your old name, you can put off your old ways, you can put off all that you used to do in the world. But if you ain't got the love for your brethren, you still dead. That's what the scripture is saying. Read. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. You still dead. <laughs> Everything that you done did up to, up to get you into here, putting on the fringes, letting your beards grow, your sisters taking off the pants, putting on dresses and skirts, modest apparel, eating, uh, eating according to the dietary law in Leviticus 11, keeping the high holy days. That's all good and well. But if you ain't got the love for the brethren, you still dead. You still that same person you was in the world. Forget the long Hebrew name you might have now. You still that same Negro that was out in the world doing whatever you was doing if you ain't got the love for your brethren. Everybody understand that? From there, jump down to verse 17. The book of 1 John, chapter 3 and verse 17. But whoso have this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, 
How dwelleth the love of God in him? Read it again. This is one of the ways that you show that love for your brother. Read. But whoso have this world's good. So whoso is in a good estate in life. Let's say you have a, a, a nice job, you have a nice house, you have funds saved up to be able to provide for yourself for years on and years on. Read. And seeth his brother have need. But you see one of your brothers or you see one of your sisters and they are poor. They got it bad. But they trying to keep God's commandments. Read. And shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him. If you ain't trying to help that brother or that sister in their poor state, if you ain't trying to make sure that that brother got something to eat when you got something to eat, if you, trying to, if you ain't trying to help that brother get a, a roof over their head when you got a roof over your head, what do it say? How dwelleth the love of God in him? And it said, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from that person, how dwelleth the love of God in him? So how do you have the love of God if you take it care of, but you see your brother or your sister that's keeping God's commandments, they're suffering, you ain't trying to help them. There's, there is no love of God in you if you are not trying to help your brother or your sister that's in a poor estate, and you have the means to help them? Hold that. Give me Sirach chapter 20, verse 29. The book of Sirach, or Ecclesiasticus, chapter 29 and verse 20. Uh -huh. Help thy neighbor according to thy power, and beware that thou thyself fall not into the same. So we're supposed to help our brethren, help our neighbors according to our power, but beware that you don't fall into the same estate. So if I got $20, and you need $20, and I need that same 20 am I supposed to give you that $20? No, because then I'm going to be poor just like you. But if I got $100, and I can get by with 50 and you say, bro, you got $10 I can borrow, am I supposed to give him that $10 according to the scriptures? Yes. Yes. According to 1 John chapter 3, verse 17, we're supposed to help one another. That's how we show brotherly love. Charity is not just giving everything you have to somebody that has nothing. Especially to somebody that's not keeping God's commandments. Everybody understand that much, right? Right. From there, jump to 1 John chapter 4 and verse 20. Going back to where we started in the beginning of the class. The book of 1 John chapter 4 and verse 20. Uh -huh. If a man say... I love God. If a man say, I love God, I'm a child of God, everything we hear in Christianity, read. And hateth his brother. Uh -huh. He is a liar. He is a what? He is a liar. You don't really love God if you hate your brother. Read. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he have seen, how can he love God whom he have not seen? So how are you going to say, oh, I love God, I love Jesus, I'm a child of God? You ain't never seen neither one of them. But the scripture says, we was made in their image. So if you don't have enough wherewithal, enough sense to love your brother and love your sisters, those that was made in God's image, how can you love God? How can you truly say, oh, I'm an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. I keep all the commandments. But you don't love your brethren. It means nothing. One of them friends is sitting in these chairs right now, if you got any strife with anybody up in here, you better fix that. Especially if it's something vain. The scriptures tell us about Matthew 18. If we have issue with one another, we got to get that squashed. We got to take care of that. Harboring hatred towards your brother, towards your sister, we're going to see where it gets you according to the scriptures. Read on. Verse 21. And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God, love his brother also. Read it again. And this commandment. And this what? And this commandment. Now this idea. And this commandment. Now this suggestion. And this commandment. And this commandment, read. Have we from him, that he who loveth God, loveth his brother also. So what commandment is that? Brothers, I need a brother to raise his hand. What commandment is that? that we read in the Bible. As Rod, put your hand down. Miss Ariel, put your hand down. I'm just going to call on somebody. Oh, I got you. Brother, uh, what's your name? Huh? UZL. UZL? Stand up, Brother UZL. Uh, 
Say it on the mic, edify everybody. What commandment is that that we're referring to in 1 John chapter 4, verse 21? Uh, I love that neighbor. Is it in Exodus 20? Is it Exodus 20? It's in Exodus 20. I'm looking at it. <laughs> yeah. But let's, let's get a little bit more detail. Who has another one besides Exodus 20? Shalom, leadership, um, Leviticus. No, not, not. Oh. Well, you know, already gave it away. Go ahead and say it. Leviticus 19 and 17. There you go, Leviticus 19 and 17. Let's go to that. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19 and verse 17. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. So all that hate that you harboring for one of your brothers and sisters, you breaking the God's commandments. Three. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. Rebuke thy neighbor talking about your brother. It's not talking about Edomite Harry that lives next door to you. That's not your neighbor. Not according to the scriptures. Your neighbor is your brothers and sisters keeping God's commandments. It's not talking about uh, Jim Bob across the street living in that trailer. It ain't talking about him. He's not your neighbor. And not suffer sin upon him. And you ain't supposed to suffer sin upon your brother. Remember, that's what we read. You keeping the commandments, that's how you show love. So if I see my brother walking down the street, and I see him with a blunt in his mouth, and I'm supposed to just walk past him like, hey, what's up, bro? And just keep on moving? No, I'm supposed to edify him, bro. According to the scriptures, your body is a temple. You destroyed it right now, brother. You're committing sin. Put that out. Throw it away. Go chew some gum or something. Eat some potato chips. You got to break that habit. If I see my sister walking around in a pair of pants, I'm supposed to just walk past like, hey, say, what's up? Or try to sneak a peek? Is that what we're supposed to be doing to our sisters? No, we're supposed to edify them. Let them know, according to the scriptures, they are the princesses of God. Royalty. They're supposed to carry themselves a certain way. Which means they're supposed to dress a certain way. We're supposed to edify each other on that. If I see my brother on the side of the road, he's selling, he's selling, um, he's selling pork or something. He's grilling up a whole lot of pork out there. I'm supposed to just, uh, walk past my brother. That just smells good. Keep doing what you're doing. Knowing that he got pork on the grill? But, but no, brother, according to Leviticus 11, you ain't supposed to be selling that. You ain't supposed to be cooking that. You're not supposed to be eating that. But do we do that? How many of y'all do that? Be honest. Be honest. How many of y'all, when y'all stop in a stoplight, if y'all just walking in the store, y'all see y'all people in the midst of sin, they try to say something to you, you just walk past them. Who actually try to give their people a fly, or try to give them a car, try to edify them on who they truly are, what they're supposed to be doing? If you say, oh, I ain't got time, I'm in a rush, that's understandable. But if you know you got time, you know you see your brothers and sisters in sin, are you truly trying to edify them? Because I understand, we ain't getting up out of this captivity until our people repent. Until that one third is established and that 144,000, we ain't going nowhere. If our people are still out here um, um, following out the world star hip hop, having Facebook beefs, all this dumb crap that our people are into, we ain't going nowhere. And if you ain't trying to get them to change their ways, if you ain't trying to get them to see that they the greatest thing on this earth, they supposed to be keeping God's commandments, they supposed to put away World Star, they supposed to put away the weed, they supposed to put away the pork, shrimp, crab, lobster, they supposed to be honoring the Sabbath day, they supposed to be letting their beards grow as men, if you ain't really trying to edify your people on that, you like captivity. You like being here. And you hate your people. Because you're not supposed to suffer sin upon your brethren. According to the scriptures. Read it again. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19 and verse 17. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. 
and not suffer sin upon him. What is the heart according to the Bible? Do you want your brothers to answer that? Miss Isaiah, put your hand down. Brother Isaiah. Uh, Mark 7, 21. Mark 7, 21. Let's get that. For you new brothers and sisters, the heart, according to the Bible, is not talking about that vessel in your chest that pumps blood. The book of Mark, chapter 7 and verse 21. Uh -huh. For from within, out of the heart of men. For from within, out of the heart of men, read. Proceed evil thoughts. Proceed what? Evil thoughts. Now, do we think with that in our chest that's beaten? No. We have thoughts with this. So the heart according to the Bible is talking about our mind. So you're not supposed to suffer sin upon your brother. Thou shalt any wise rebuke thy neighbor. Read. Let me say something real quick. Wait, wait, and also too, real quick, get a book of Ecclesiastes. Just real quick. Uh, Ecclesiastes 3. And uh, verse 1. The book of Ecclesiastes. Chapter 3 and verse 1. To everything there is a season and a time, a time to every purpose under heaven. So you read down and it just give you the time of everything that goes on. A time to sow, a time to tear, a time to reap, a time to sow, a um, time to plant, a time to reap. Understand this too, when, you go, when you're going into teaching, there's a time and place for everything. It's impossible for us to go out and try to teach everybody in the world. This is the point when you come back to 1 Corinthians 5 and uh, 10. It tells you, must needs that you go out of the world. So when the office is bringing out, it's an opportunity. Every time you get an opportunity, especially when you, you, you know, you, if there's a certain relationship that you have with this brother, say for instance that you work with this brother, and every, all the employees go outside, and it's smoke break time or something like that. You outside, You're like yeah, brother. You know the work going's good, but I noticed that you, you know, you smoke cigarettes. You know, you ever thought about quitting? You know, First Corinthians says that the temple is your body, so it's an opportunity to teach. Now, if you go out and just try to tell everybody, look, you shouldn't smoke. You'll never get it. You'll never get it done because it's just simply too many people that's wrong. Remember, Isaiah 61, 60 says. It says the world lieth in darkness. The whole course of the world is out of course. So everything is out of order. So it, would, it wouldn't be necessary to teach everybody. But when there's an occasion to do good, then that's when your opportunity to do, is to do it. That's why Christ said be a light. Okay, you show by your examples. You teach by your examples. Okay? I'll make sure everybody understand that. Go ahead, Elvis. Thank you, Cap, for the clarification. I want to say, you know, just go out there and start blasting people, you know what I'm saying? That's how you get beat up. You know, I don't want you to get beat up. But you got to, like Captain said, the occasion is there. Take the opportunity. But we try to get out of captivity. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org